Okay, so Wakanda Forever's original script is something I think it's impossible not to wonder about in the wake of the movie's release. Due to Chadwick Boseman's death, the production was massively changed, with Ryan Coogler having to deal with the monumentous task of rewriting the entire thing from the ground up because of the actor's passing. However, due to interviews in the Black Panther Wakanda Forever podcast, we now have a fair idea of what was going to be in it. In this video, we're going to be going through everything we know was in the original plan, and also our general thoughts about it. There may be some spoilers here in regards to the final film, so if you haven't had a chance to check it out, then please check out now. If you enjoy the video, we'd love you 3000 if you hit the thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns like this every day. Without the way, I'm your host Paul, now let's get into our original Wakanda Forever script breakdown. Now Chadwick's death looms largely over the film, with Coogler stating that he and the cast put their love and grief into every aspect of the movie. The Weekly Planet recently touched upon what the director experienced when finishing the first draft, and we now know from the official Black Panther podcast that Coogler actually sent this off to Chadwick. When discussing the script he said, I had just finished it. My last conversation with him was calling him and asking if he wanted to read it before I got notes from the studio. That was the last time we spoke, and he passed maybe a couple of weeks after I finished. Coogler has since gone on to say that though he never suspected Chadwick had cancer at the time, in retrospect he could tell something was off. During the filming of the first movie, he stated that Chadwick would seem tired from time to time, and that he'd need to take breaks more often than usual on some days. We now know what Chadwick was battling with, and looking at his performance, it's actually incredible that he got through it all with the pain that he was in. Now when discussing their last conversation, Coogler said, He was tired. I could tell he was tired. I'd been trying to get hold of him for a few days. I could tell something was up. But he was joking and laughing, talking about how he was planning a wedding in South Carolina, talking about the people he was going to invite. And then he said he didn't want to read it, because he didn't want to get in the way of whatever notes the studio might have, so he was like, it's better if I read it later. But I found out later that he was too tired to read anything. It's devastating to find this out, and it's clear that he influenced how they handled T'Challa's passing due to him fighting his disease in secret. CBR recently reported that Chadwick did in fact get the chance to read it though, and that Letitia Wright heard through the grapevine that the actor had been making fun of how long it was. He'd been joking that it was over 300 pages, which would make it one of the longest MCU movies ever. This carries over to the final version too, with it clocking in at 2 hours and 41 minutes. Interestingly though, we now know that the original version also dealt with the themes of grief too. In an interview with Inverse, Coogler laid out the entire plan, and the first thing he talked about was the grief that the movie tackled with. However, this was T'Challa dealing with his own grief of the snap and the time that was lost. When Thanos snapped away half of all life in the universe, T'Challa was one of the unlucky ones that were taken, and this would have left the throne empty for five years. Coogler said that the movie was going to address this directly, and that its tone would be similar to what we got in the final release. When going over this, Ryan said, the character was going to be grieving the loss of time, you know, coming back after being gone for five years. As a man with so much responsibility to many, coming back after a forced five years away, that's what the film was tackling. He was grieving time he couldn't get back, grief was a big part of it. Coogler stated that Shiri was snapped away too, and that they would both return with this feeling of loss. Now personally, I feel one of the big flaws in the MCU at the moment is that we haven't really dealt with what happened in those five years. There's been minor moments like the Ronan plot in the Disney plus Hawkeye show, but beyond that, it's something we know very little about. It's meant to be a completely depressing time too, with Haywood and WandaVision saying they had to do dark things in order to survive. This ended up making him work to bring Vision back to life, so that planet Earth had its own protector. Coogler said that Wakanda Forever would tackle this idea too, and that an element of the final film was laced throughout this early draft. In that we watch as Franz attempts to steal vibranium from the Wakandans at one of their research labs. The original script had elements of this as well, with the fact that T'Challa was gone for five years, causing big issues. Because the kingdom didn't have a Black Panther to protect it, several government entities had tried to intrude an attack in order to gain the precious material for themselves. Killmonger destroyed all of the sacred herbs, and because of this they couldn't pass the mantle on to anyone else. The nation had no protector, and this put even more guilt onto the shoulders of T'Challa. He returned to find Wakanda in the midst of a cold war with the UN, desperate to gain vibranium. The film of course ended with T'Challa opening up Wakanda to the world, and he would have to deal with the fact that they had betrayed him. Though Michael B. Jordan's return isn't mentioned in any of the interviews, 
I think this is because of spoilers that it could bring to people going to see the film. However, I think that he would have appeared in the film in some form or another. He wanted to take the fight to the world and make Wakanda known through the use of force. T'Challa, on the other hand, wanted it to be peaceful, and I can't help but think seeing hashtag Killmonger was right might make him question his own leadership abilities. T'Challa was very much forced into being king by the sudden death of his father, and though he beat M'Baku for the throne, his reign had been marked by a lot of turmoil. We of course had Killmonger usurping him, and then Thanos attacking Wakanda. So it's a lot to deal with, and him failing to protect his nation would be another big thing that I think would have added to the guilt. Now, the villain of the movie was always going to be Namor, with Kugler stating that he was always the antagonist. Black Panther and Namor have fought several times in the comics before, with both Atlantis and Wakanda going to war with each other. In the comics, Namor and T'Challa's rivalry was first introduced in the 1970s, but when we look at the timeline of the Marvel Universe, they fought long before that. The first battle happened during World War II, and over the decades they've had an uneasy alliance that's constantly, constantly broken. There's been several tense exchanges with them, and pretty much every time they talk, there's a chance things could kick off. Black Panther and Namor are some of the only Marvel characters that are actually rulers, and it's not like when Iron Man attacks somewhere because he isn't the leader of a country. They however are, and therefore every act is seen as something that can destabilise the peace on the political landscape. Interestingly, Shuri and Amor fought each other during Civil War II, which may have provided basis for the final cut. The tidal wave scene was there too, with this being a major attack that Namor launched. Because of this, I'm guessing that Ramonda died in the original version of the script, without starting a streak of vengeance within the King T'Challa. The final release ends with Shuri realising that vengeance is consuming her, and this is a line that calls back to T'Challa, saying it in Civil War. I think that a similar motif might have happened once more, with T'Challa again realising that this will just start a cycle of violence. M'Baku warns of Wakanda and Talokan devolving into nations of eternal war, which I think may have been a theme that was apparent in the original version. I do think that by the sounds of it, the basic backbone of the film would have been the same, with T'Challa questioning his leadership, which does get replaced by Shuri questioning her own skills and abilities. To her, the fact that she couldn't make a herb, is her basically thinking that she led to his death, and though that's not the case, I think this motif would have mirrored the failure T'Challa felt about his own kingdom. Unfortunately, we'll never know what the original script would have played out like due to the death of Chadwick Boseman, but I personally think that the final result perfectly handles his passing. Grief is a central theme to it, and it drives the characters and their actions in the movie. Though T'Challa is gone, his presence is felt throughout, and we of course end knowing that his legacy carries on. Either way, there's lots to unpack from this, and obviously, let me know your thoughts on the script details and your general thoughts on the movie too. We're in a competition right now and giving away three copies of House of the Dragon Season 1 on the 15th of December, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the video. We pick the comments at random on the 15th, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out one of our Wakanda Forever breakdowns linked on screen right now. There's lots of things to talk about in the movie, especially that post credit scene, so definitely head over there right after this. Without the way, thanks for sticking through the video. I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.